Hi, my name is Paul. I have CVID and... I'm Ann. I'm Paul's mom. And um, it's been a little bit of a long road with getting him diagnosed with his CVID. He was always sick when he was a baby and they just kept saying oh it's just regular childhood illnesses it's just asthma um, and so he was diagnosed when he was eight um, the first time he did the IVIG in the hospital and do you want to talk about that a little bit and so I once I got home from the IVIG I started getting sick and throwing up and it just wouldn't stop and so <clears throat> I went I went to this other place and I got sub Q Hyzentra and it's been a lot better since I've got the sub Q. Do you still get sick? And but I still get sick, but the sub Q help. The Hyzentra helped me not get much sick. And as a mom, I would just say to any parents who are out there listening that um, the CVID is definitely a, what I call a family illness. Um, you know, my husband is wonderful, but he does miss a lot of days of work. He's self-employed, so he gets to take Paul to the doctor um, and spend time with him doing that. Um, of course, you know, it affects Paul a great deal because Paul is getting the infusions once a week. Um, it affects Paul's older sister because um, her friends who have quote unquote normal brothers and sisters, it's hard for them to understand what she goes through. Um, we're here right now at an IDF retreat and it's been great because she's met other children who have either younger or older brothers or sisters who have a you know common variable immune deficiency or a primary immune deficiency um, and of course you know it affects me because I teach and I'm there trying to teach and I'm there trying to do my job and um, you know worried about if he feels okay and my husband missing work and is my daughter okay um, you know they'll tell you all the time to, to live a normal life um, my husband and mine saying is it's a new normal um, it's not what somebody else's normal may look like. It's different. Um, and even within the immune deficiency um, cluster of diseases, they, my normal may not look like your normal and our normal may not look like your normal. Um, the biggest thing I need to say to the parents is push. Um, if we hadn't pushed, we might still be waiting on a diagnosis. His nurse practitioner at the pulmonologist just kept saying it was asthma and I knew it was more than that. Um, and even once you get the infectious disease doctor or the immunologist, you still have to push. Um, I would say as a parent with a child, and you can kind of help me out, you have to look at how they feel um, and not just listen. It's very hard for them. Um, you know, I know his teacher will ask him how he feels. But I don't think as a nine-year-old you don't want to tell your teacher you don't feel good, right? Yeah. Right. You don't because if you do then your whole class is just going to like ask a question to see if you're okay and it kind of overwhelms you when you're sick because you don't, sometimes you don't know where you are or what you're doing. And I think sometimes too it's hard to explain because Paul, you always say, like, I never feel well. Yeah. And so it's hard for him to say to his teacher, oh, right, I don't feel well. Um, and then she'll say, what's wrong? As you know, I'm a teacher, as most teachers would. Well, it's just a general feeling of not being well. Um, definitely work with your schools, even if your child, like, Paul does not have an IEP um, because he's not considered a special education child. He's in gifted and talented classes. Um, so he's not considered where he needs an IEP, but you can get a 504 plan and he has that in place. Um, just make sure that you advocate for your child and for yourself. Um, 
Luckily, I'm very fortunate in that I have a wonderful human resource department where I teach, and I teach in the same district he goes to school in, which is a benefit. Um, and I have a wonderful benefits coordinator that I have had some issues with my principal, who is a wonderful principal, but um, it's hard for her to understand because she doesn't have children. So just make sure that you understand the Family and Medical Leave Act and that when you have doctor's notes, it's okay. And try not to feel guilty. I know that it's been hard as a mother and hard for my husband as a father. Did we cause this? Um, everybody's unique in their own way, we always tell Paul. Um, and do try to let them live as normal life as possible. Paul goes to public school. Um, we had thought about pulling him out and putting him in online school, but Paul can tell you he wasn't cool with that, right? Because yeah. he likes going to school. Because if you go to a pro pro if you go to an online school, then you're not going to have any f friends around you, and all you're going to have is friends in your neighborhood, and you're never going to meet new people at school, or you're never going to have a real teacher where you can actually see her and you're not going to be able to actually be, you're not going to be able to actually um, go on the school bus and you know just hang out with your friends and have fun on the playground or wherever you're going. The one thing I can say is that as a ch I would say as a parent of a child with the immune disorder I kind of defer to him as far as who he wants to let know um, of course, I always let we always let his teachers know, the principal of his school knows, the school nurse knows, but I'm talking as far as children-wise um, in the class. I always defer to him and I always let him know who he would like to, to tell that he has the common variable immune deficiency or CVID. Um, even at church, I kind of let him decide. Um, you know, he's nine. He's old enough where he can decide if he wants people to know or not. Um, Again, those in leadership positions like our children's pastor and such, of course we let them know. But, um, you know, as far as his friends go, it's up to him whether or not he wants to tell them. Um, and I was like, does everybody in your class know? Yeah. yeah. And um, everybody in my class always, like, asks me, are you okay? Do you need anything? Do you need me to go ask the teacher if... You could go to the nurse. I mean, they help a lot. Yeah. And of course, that's different for everybody. You know, some kids, they don't want a lot of people to know. Paul's always been pretty vocal about it. Um, he's read the um, Our Immune System book to the class, um, which was actually neat. They learned a lot from it. But I always say to defer to the child, especially when they're older. Um, I know it's a little different when they're two or three. Uh, but I feel like once they start school, you know, first grade and up, they're kind of old enough to make that decision of who they want to tell. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, and if the people who are watching and you have something like I do, um, just always know that your friends are always going to be there when you need them because you never know what's going to happen. And if you have some something or your sis, your sister or brother does, or your sibling, just try to watch out for them, and don't try to just go to your mom and dad if you don't know what's happening. And if you have something like I do, then one thing they always have to know is the Hyzentra, it will get stronger and stronger, but all you have to do is calm down, probably take a few naps, and then every all the strong part will go away. Well, appreciate you letting us share share our story. Uh, I hope that we've helped somebody out there, um, and thank you.